Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brandy Shanae and I'm going to be doing my August book haul or should I say my humongous huge book haul I have ever done. So it's a lot of books so let's discard it but first I will say I might do a synopsis. I'll read the synopsis you know and then also show the book. There has been some books that I have already read for August of course and so I'm not going to do a synopsis on them obviously but We'll see what happens when I'm in the mood and when I get started. So the first book that I got in August, or one of the books I got in August, was Finding Yvonne, which I have currently finished. It was a great book. I gave it a five out of five stars. It was just lovely, and you should definitely check it out. The next book that I got this month was Welcome to Lagos um, by Chi Bondu uh, Onuzo. Oh, and also, by the way, Finding Yvonne was by Brandy Colbert and she also had written point and uh, little and lion I haven't read those books but I plan on doing so next month in September but back to this welcome to Lagos by Chimbundo Anuzo and it says let me see I'll read the back for you it says five runaways ride the bus from Belessa to a better life in a mega city they are unlike the allies a private a housewife an officer a militant and a young girl they share a need for escape and a dream for the future soon they will also share a burden none could have expected but for now the five sit quietly with their hopes as the billboards fly past and shout welcome to lagos or lagos i say lagos but isn't this this is a beautiful cover um this is a paper bag. I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't like the hardcover that bit, that much. I like this one. It basically shows you the people of Lagos, the city, the cars, everything like that. So yeah, so these are the books that I have gotten in August. So yeah. Next book I have gotten is um, Escape West by, uh, it's the author of The Reluctant Fundamentalist, Mohsin Hamid. And I will read the back for you. It says... In a country teetering on the brink of civil war, two young people meet, sensual, fiercely independent Nadia and gentle, restrained Saheed. They embark on a fortive love affair and are soon cloistered in a premature intimacy by, by the unrest roiling their city. As familiar streets are turned into a patchwork of checkpoints and bomb blasts, the couple begins to hear whispers about doors, doors that can whisk people far away, imperiously and for a price. As the violence es escalates, Nadia and Zahid decide that they no longer have a choice. Leaving their homeland and their old lives behind, they find a door and step through. An epic compressed into a slender page turner, Exit West is both of a time of our time it says sorry let me refer let me read you this the sentence it says an epic compressed into a slender page turner exit west is both of our time and for all time so i definitely look forward to reading this i'm not sure when i'm going to read it but i plan on doing so and just look at the cover it's great and it glistens it has like glitter on it so i like this it's like ombre in the spine like this so yes next book that i just finished and pretty much was recommended by emmett in my books is Heretics Anonymous. I gave this a five out of five stars. It's so hilarious. Michael is so hilarious. Great characters. Loved it. And I would definitely, definitely recommend this to anyone. Especially if you go on my Goodreads, you will also see my review. I definitely like this book because this is based off the main character who's Michael, who is an atheist. And, uh, and like, his parents sent him they like move and his parents um make him go makes him go to a catholic school and i find that that's just the irony that's just this is crazy right <laughs> he's atheist and going to catholic school but i went to a, and i really thought i would have a connection with michael i'm not an atheist or anything but um i did go to an all christian school and so there's just a lot of things contradictory with everything is like because not a lot of people are christian at all but who says you gotta be Christian to go to a Christian private school? Nobody. Just like this. You can be atheist and still go to a Catholic school. So yeah. So I really gave this a 5 out of 5 stars just to let you know. And this was a great book and a great read. I definitely recommend this book. And this book just came out this month along with Finding Yvonne. Just came out earlier this month in August. So definitely check this book out. And this book is by Katie Henry as well. So yeah. And this is, I think this is her debut, op debut book. I'm not sure, but hilarious even says the divine comedy right there it was a it was definitely <laughs> hilarious so definitely check this book out the next book that i got 
was um, Bright Smoke Cold Fire by Rosamond Hodge, which she had written Cruel Beauty and Crimson Bound. Um, I don't know much about this book. Let me read the synopsis. It says, When the mysterious fog of the ruining crept over the world, the living died and the dead rose. Only the city of Yvera was left untouched. As the heirs of Yvera's most powerful and warring families, Mahayani Romeo and Juliet Castrosu, so share a love deeper than duty, honor, even life. But the magic laid on the, on the Juliet at birth compels her to punish her clan's enemies and Romeo has just killed her cousin Tybalt, which means he must die. Paris Catterson has always wanted always wanted to serve his family by guarding the, the Juliet. But when his ward tries to escape her fate, magic goes terribly wrong wrong killing her and leaving Paris bound to Romeo. If he wants to discover the truth of what happened, Paris must delve deep into the city, ally with his most his most his most worst enemy and perhaps turn against his clan Mahayani Ranajo just wants to protect her city but she's the only one who believes it's in peril in her desperate hunt for information she accidentally pulls this Juliet from the mouth of death and finds herself bound to the bitter angry girl only to learn she might be the one person who can help her recover the secret to saving Viara both pairs will find friendship where they least expect it both will find that Yaveri holds more secrets and dangers than anyone ever expected and outside the city's walls death is waiting inspired by romeo and juliet bright smoke and coal fire is a darkly romantic and aspiric aspiric fantasy from acclaimed author rosamond hodge so i haven't read this book i thought this was interesting and i decided to get it due to the fact that i had got the second book and won this from goodreads giveaway and this is endless water starless sky which is the second book and this one's about in the last days of the world. The walls of the air are still falling and the dead are rising faster than ever. Juliet is trapped, ordered by Lord Enil of the Mahani to sacrifice the remaining members of her family, the, the uh, Kretasu, to stave off the end of the world. Though they're certain that his plan is useless, Juliet and her former friend Renaho must completely or must compel with Lord Ennio's wishes unless they can discover a different, darker path to protecting Viara. Romeo is tortured, finally aware that his true love is alive. He is at once elated and de devastated, for his actions led directly to the destruction of her clan. The only way to redemption is to offer his life to the Carter suit to protect it. And so with that, it says, Romeo is tortured, finally aware that his true love is alive. He is at once elated and devastated for his actions, led directly to the destruction of her clan. The only way the redemption is, is to offer his life to the Curtis suit to protect and support them, even if it means dying to do so. When Romeo's and Juliet's path converge once again, only a journey into death will offer answers and the key to saving them all. But it is, but is it a journey either of them will survive? So yes, so pretty much when, since I won this off of Goodreads, I had to get the first book so I can read the second one. So I have both of these books by uh, Rosamond Hodge. So, and it has great covers too, so yeah. So if you have already read these books, please let me know, by the way, what you think. The next book I got was Lumine. This was on my TBR for this month, but I never got to it, but I plan on reading it, hopefully, eventually. But... I'm sure everyone has already read this book, so I'm not going to say much about it. But yes, this is the other book that I that, uh, that I have gotten in August. The next book that I have gotten, when in which I pretty much gotten this when I was at Books a Million when I went to South Carolina for my vacation, is And I Darken. And I'm pretty, like, excited about this book, pretty much, because I heard a lot of great things about it. And it says, no one expects a princess to be brutal. So it's like wow i definitely am looking forward to this it says wrenched from their homeland ever since lada and her younger brother radu were abandoned by their fathers to be raised in the ottoman courts lada has known that being ruthless is the key to survival she and radu are pawns in a vicious game an unseen sword hovering over their every move for the lineage that makes them special also makes them targets uh, their hopes and dreams at odds. 
Lada despises the Ottomans and bides, bides her time, planning her vengeance for the day when she can return to claim her birthright. Radu longs only for a place where he feels safe. When they meet Mehmed, the defiant and lonely son of the Sultan, who is expected to rule a nation, Radu feels as if he's made a true friend and Lada wonders if she's finally found someone worthy of her passion. And only and only each other to save them, but Mehmet is heir to the very empire that Lada has sworn to fight against, and that Radu now considers home. Together, Lada, Radu, and Mehmet form a toxic triangle that strains the bonds of love and loyalty to the breaking point. So this also sounds great, and maybe it'll be something like Mulan, sort of, not really. But I'm super excited for this. I'm like wanting to pretty much read this whenever I can. But yeah, next book that I got from uh, Books Million when I was in South Carolina was The Poppy War. I finally had to get it, especially when it said they trained her for a war she intends to end. And I think that's just amazing. Let me read the synopsis for you because I've definitely, I've been, this is, has been all over booktube. So I was like, I need to get this. And so it says, she is a peasant. She is a student. She is a soldier. She is a goddess. When Rin aced the kaju the empire wide test to find the most talented youth to study at the acad academies it was a shock to everyone to the test officials who couldn't believe a war orphan from rooster province could pass without cheating to ren's guardians who always thought they'd be able to marry ren off to further their criminal enterprise and to ren herself who realized she was now finally free of the servitude and despair that had made up her daily existence that she got into sinagard Senegal, the most elite military school in the Nakara Empire, was even more surprising. But surprises aren't always good. Being a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south is not an easy thing at Senegal or Senegal. Ren is targeted from the outset by rival classmates because of her color, poverty, and gender. Driven to desperation, she discovers she possesses a lethal, unearthly power and aptitude, aptitude for the nearly mythical art of shamanism. Exploring the depths of her gift with the help of a seemingly insane teacher and psychoactive substances, Ren learns that gods long thought dead are very much alive and that mastering control over her powers could mean more than just surviving school. For, for even though the Nakara Empire is at peace, the Federation of Mugen still lurks across a narrow sea. The military advanced federation occupied the Nakara Empire for decades after the first Poppy War and only barely lost the continent in the second. And while most of the people in the empire would rather forget their painful history, a few are aware that a third Poppy War is just a spark away. Ren's uh, sh uh, sh shamanic powers may be the only way to save her people. But as she finds out more about the god who has chosen her, the vengeful phoenix, she fears that winning the war may cost her humanity. And it may already be too late. So I'm definitely excited to read this book. Um, please let me know if somebody wants to do buddy read with me when it comes to this because I think this is going to be amazing. So please, anybody wants to do buddy read, please let me know in the comments. The next book, oops, <laughs> the next books that I have gotten was A Torch Against the Night, which I did my buddy read. I won't say more about this book because I'm sure a lot of people already read it. And of course, I got the third book that recently came out, I think in June or July, A Reaper at the Gates, which I haven't read. Uh, the people that I buddy read um, with, pretty much we agreed that we're going to wait until the next book comes out, which is next year. So we have to wait a whole nother year. And we, discreet, we agreed that we should just wait. That way we can have this book already and then move towards the next book so we're gonna wait on reading this i was gonna read it this month and i was like no i'm going to wait and start something else the next book that or books that i got are the darkest minds books by alexander bracken i got the tie-in edition the darkest minds I'm not going to read the synopsis because I'm sure a lot of people have already read this book. Um, but if not, definitely check this out. I got this at Half Price Books. It was only $8.79. Um, and I was interested. I liked the tie-in um, edition of the movie. I thought the cover was pretty phenomenal. So, yeah. Um, and then I got the next books, too. Which is this one. Which is In the Afternight which is the second book. And then the next one is Never Fade. 
or I think this is this is the second one I think so yeah so this is the first one this is the second one and this is the third one so yeah so I'm definitely looking forward to reading these books eventually I haven't even seen the movie yet due to the fact that I haven't read the books so after I read the books I will then watch the first movie which I'm super excited for and I got this off of the book first um, uh, raffle which is the darkest legacy um, I think I already I'm not gonna read the synopsis but isn't the cover just gorgeous this is pretty much taking after everything that has happened in the darkest mind this is basically another like a follow-up sort of or or a spin-off I guess you could say and I'm looking forward to reading this as well and then the final book or one of the books it's not the final one is uh, these rebel waves by Sarah Arash um, I got this what I got this what, da, 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 da. yes I got this at from the beacon book box um, and so it's been signed and everything and let me read the synopsis for you it see it says Ada Luna is a soldier five years ago she helped the magic rich island of Grace the Roe or the Ray overthrow its oppressor, Agrid, a country ruled by religion. But adjusting to post-war life has not been easy. When an Agridian delegate vanishes during peace talks with Grace the Ray's new council, Agrid demands brutal justice, but Lou suspects something dangerous is at work. Um, and then you have Devereaux as a pirate. As one of the stream raiders who run rampant on Grace the Ray, he scavenges the island's magic plants and sells them on the black market. But after Agarit accuses raiders of the diplomat's abduction, Vex becomes a target, an expert navigator. He agrees to help Lou find the Agridian, but the truth they uncover could be deadlier than any war. And then it says, ben Benat is a heretic. The crown prince of Agrid, he harbors a secret obsession with Grace LeRae's forbidden magic. When Ben's father, the king, gives him the shocking task of reversing Agrid's fear of magic, Ben has to decide if one prince can change a devout country or if he's building his own pirate. As conspiracies arise, arise, Lou, Vex, and Ben will have to decide who they really are and what they are willing to become for peace. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this book. I'm not pretty sure what I'm going to, but excited for it. Definitely one of my anticipated reads of the year. Then the book that I'm currently reading that I'm pretty I'm probably going to finish up tomorrow or the next day is A Grace and Fury um, from Tracy Banghart. I got this from the, the um, Alcrate August Box, uh, Ruthers Royals, and I just love the cover. It's stunning. I like it. It's really pretty, and the spine is also beautiful as well. But yeah, these are all the books that I have gotten in August, like I said, and humongous August haul. Like humongous, like the biggest haul that I have ever had since I started BookTube. But yeah, so if you have read any of these books or if you are going to read these books, please let me know what you thought of them and what you or when you're going to read them. Also, if someone wants to read The Poppy War with me as a, a buddy read, please let me know down below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this book haul I did and... I can't stop buying books you guys I need to be on a book ban for real but how can you stop I just can't because something always comes out or there's something that somebody on booktube just said you should go read this and I go ahead and get the book so yeah but thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please give me a thumbs up get also hit subscribe also hit that bell too so that way you will be notified when I put up another video but thank you so much guys and I'll see you later